Okay. Let's start then. There's always something funny with these lectures. Uh, because I don't have a script, as you see, that I simply read whatever I say. But I try to, to speak freehand, so to say, pre-time. But I still have to make the same, more or less the same, what I did in the morning, meeting with the other uh, economy students. Which is a little bit tricky, to not to copy myself. And I know that I started actually <coughs> referring to this photo in the morning to say we are all playing theater. This is one famous sentence, one famous phrase. Uh, used by Shakespeare, we are on, all on the stage. And this is where we are, we are on the stage. And don't believe you are not on the stage, you are on the stage as well. Uh, meaning, we are on the stage in terms of many different things, and with many different aspects. I mentioned last time, I think it was last time, or one of the first times I talked about entering from the east entrance and seeing these gatherings of new students, freshers, and parents coming, and I don't know who was there. It was just an impression. And part of these impressions is something I link back to two books. You probably find similar books in Asian culture and Chinese culture. This is one British, English, I think, and one French book, Charles Dickens, Great Expectations. If you want to know anything about British history or English history, read Charles Dickens replaces any textbook and is fun, I think. It's just entertaining, but, but it really shows how people lived their expectations, their disappointments, their successes, and puts them into context, meaning doesn't explain but show you how people lived. And the other is earlier by the French writer Voltaire, who was a naughty boy. Candide ou l'optimisme, Candide or the optimism. And the point of departure of this story, Voltaire, it's a, short, it's, it's a small book, I will put it into the library. Read it recently again, so I have a copy there that this Dr. Pangloss, uh, the one of the main figures in this novel, says everything is perfect. This is just a perfect, beautiful world. The best of all. Nothing can be better than it is. And you can prove it. Very easy to prove it. Everything is in place. Everything has a meaning. Even the nose has a meaning. Why? because it holds the glasses. So he puts things into place as he likes it. Everything, he has an explanation for it. And it's not about this organ that we need to breathe, but it's there to keep the glasses in place. So you came here with your parents, not with your parents, last year, and you thought about it before, before you came here, about future, about what you want to do with your future, and I don't know how much you could actually influence it, how much your parents listened to you, how many options you have had in terms of resources, costs money to go to university, in terms of different things. And I don't know what you expect, you, the, the expectations of your parents have been. 
All is about history. I don't know the age of you, of your parents. It's about 20, 18, 19, and it will be, I guess, about 20, uh, 40, 45 of your parents. This is history. Don't think history is something it has to be at least 100 years back. This is lived history. Your parents grew up in a country when they had been your age, which was completely different. And something you have, try, you have to try to understand, and this is about learning. Somebody told me, she was in China, I don't know, 20, 30 years back. She had been to Beijing. And she said it, it was more or less a small town. I don't know how many people lived there. But it was more or less a small town. And it urbanized within 20 years. Same, as I said, happened to Shangsha. But it's not just that more people live in one place. But these are enormous, changed, great expectations. These are enormously changed outlooks on what life is about and what society is about. The options you have. I'm not talking now about it's better, it's not better, it's getting worse, it's getting better, or what's that. Simply, and this is, we come back to it, one aspect of learning, just stating a fact it had not been then as it is now. But you come here personally with expectations, and part of these expectations is what you want to do. I don't, that, I don't think that this changed since last year. Students from last year said, studying, I would like to do something else. I would be happy to have, I don't know, a small shop and interacting with people. I would like to do nothing for a year, just travel around. I would like to study, yes, but not here and not finance. Would like to study arts. Or engineering, medicine, and so many things you can do. But for whatever reason, you are driven into this. And part of it is your environment. And this may be very different, what this means. It can mean your parents are in the finance sector, and they say, this is good, go there as well. It may be the other way around. Some parents may be in the finance sector and say, don't go there. This is just nothing you should do. Or they studied medicine, they are workers, whatsoever. And they say, don't try to follow me. Just do something else. Finance seems to be an option. So this is something you have to find your way dealing with this. And this is part of learning. Don't think. Learning is simply about something, some formula, some equation, some definitions, something you can copy and paste, and then you know something. Learning is about complex process, developing understanding. And you may know the formulas behind it. You may know the laws behind it. But you have to know a little bit more to really understand what it means. And there are values. So you basically have the three main issues. It's simply the facts you have to learn. Facts are very different. The kind of facts is very different. 
It's about definitions. It's about physical laws. Even in physics, in, in economics, you have to know them. It's about cultural effects, history, simple dates. And you may be good in one thing or another or in all. Just be honest to yourself. You are most likely not good in everything. Ask me for any date. If I really have to know my birth date, I look in my passport to check it. I, I don't feel secure there. It's just not my area. Some people know every date. And they can turn it around. 789, 1st of January, what happened? And there is the answer. They know it. We all, our brains work in different ways. This is what we have to know. And if we don't know it, we have to know how to find it out. Simple way. It is not as simple as you sometimes may think. Just go to the internet and check it. We will come back to this on different occasions. Even this is more complicated. But at least we have the sources and we, have, and we can easily learn how and when to use them. The second is values. We are always observing something. Even if we don't want to observe something, we observe it. I don't look explicitly who is listening to me, who is using the mobile phone, who is taking notes. It's just I see it. To some extent I register it. To some extent I, I don't really register it. But it is there and I value it. Not by list. But there are impressions. And I have to deal, we have to learn, and it's a lifelong process, this learning, how to deal with these impressions without being overwhelmed by them. I saw students during my lifetime, I shouldn't say, I got the impression they were completely stupid and disinterested. But this was kind of the impression. They didn't really show up, they didn't participate even if they asked them directly. I don't want to say that you is it. But I, I could approach them, they, they didn't look up, they didn't even mention anything. And on one occasion, I talked to one of these students and I thought, excellent. How is it possible to be so lethargic, I would nearly say, in many different occasions, and then to be so excellent when we discuss it. So overcoming, important part of learning, overcoming first impressions. It is about practice. For what do we need it? And practice is always something, we'll come back to it later a couple of times, it is always something of our values of our practice. What do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? And then there is another thing that is simply random things happening and we find them out. And this goes together. It's not one or the other. But they come together, they have to come together, and this is learning. To find a way of combining these different things. Not simply saying, okay, everything is fine, and, and we just take it as it is, as it is in our impression. But try to find out what are the laws behind it, and what can we do with it. Nobody knows if it is true. 
But there's this story, frequently said, frequently told, that Isaac Newton, you know Isaac Newton? That's the guy with the law of gravity. You know what, I, what, what happens if I open the fingers? It falls down. We knew it before uh, uh, Isaac Newton, because things were falling down before he was working on it. But Isaac Newton was sitting on a tree, that's the story. I don't know if, if it's true, I don't know if anybody thinks it is true. But he was sitting supposedly on a tree, an apple tree. This is important. And an apple fell on his head. Some people say it actually did not fall on his head, but it fell somewhere near him. But it was falling down. And Isaac was interested in questions about physics, about natural laws. And then he stood there and said, why did this apple fall actually down? And it happens again and again. These apples fall down. There's no reason I didn't tell it to fall down. The tree didn't tell it to fall down, but it fell down. And it falls and falls and falls, and it falls even today. So he was calculating, he was applying, systematically applying what he knew. Gravity. Magnetic fields. I don't know anything about this. I know that the apple falls down. And I know that it's not Isaac Newton who is responsible for it, but he is responsible for that we know it. Now there is the question, what do we do with this? Things fall down, optimism, everything falls down, everything is in place, we cannot change it, so we don't have to change it, and we should not change it. The problem is, I'm sitting here, the apples are here, and I don't want the apples falling on my head. What do I do? I know that the apple is falling down. Option one is, I look for another place. But here I can lean with the back to the tree, which is quite comfortable. So I distract the root, the apple falls. Because I know, now you can calculate again. I build some distraction and the apple falls here. Very, very simple thing. If you go through the calculations, it is relatively complex. Because if you just take a paper, the apple will fall down on your hand. It has to, it needs a certain strength. It needs a certain angle. So there are many things you have to consider. And it is about values, even if you look at this very small thing, we come back, we will come back to this, uh, even if you look at this very small thing and say, I just want to sit there. I want to sit there where the apples usually fall. That's my personal value. And then there are, of course, much more complex social values. I don't want this small group of people gaining from everything, gaining everything from something, and the majority doesn't get anything. Economics, mind. Distribution of gain. I want that the society, our economy, has an income, but it is equally distributed. It's a hugely complicated question. Since 150 years, 200 years, economists are battling around it. No, it's this way. No, it's this way. Free market, not free market, steering processes. 
interest rates, all this what we will talk about later. These are values. What do we want to achieve? And this is why I have to understand that values are important as part of this process, as part of learning. And this is, when you come here, being pushed here, or not being pushed, you want to study exactly what you study, being happy with the teachers or not. Not everybody can be happy with every teacher. But this is the situation you have to live with, and we have to live with. So, it's finding a way through this. And this institution is more or less a fixed place. You can change a little bit, and you should change if it's needed. Small things, sometimes larger things. It's part of learning. And you have to accept certain things. Not because we know better, because we studied already. Because we have to negotiate something and we have to find a way about learning, about different things. And this is one institution, meaning this relatively complicated thing of BU, Bangor University, BCC, Bangor, China, Bangor College China, and CSUFT, and this is, I don't know what it is, uh, <coughs> Central South University for Forestry and Technology, I think. <laughs> um, so this is a, a kind of mixed thing, and there are different interests. It's not, nobody here can do whatever he or she wants to. If you are here first semester studying, or if you are here as long-standing dean or professor or whatsoever, you cannot do exactly what you want. It's about compromising, it's about battling, it's about finding a way. Now this university, or this college, is not a standalone thing. And it's not only that the Minister for Education has some influence and some say, and this and that, regulations, but it is as well that this university, this college, is part of an international global network or whatever of universities. And there is increasingly this discussion, and you will all know it in one way or another, in very simple terms, this is a really very good university. And this is mediocre. It's, it's okay. There are different ways. There are ranking lists. On one ranking list you may be here, on another you may be here with the same university. There is something strange about it, but anyway, there are ranking lists. And usually, by and large, you have certain universities that are always somewhere up there and others they are somewhere in the middle or down. It is important. And sometimes these universities with a high rank deserve it. I don't know which ones. I know one institute, I'm linked to one institute, and this is really excellent. I'm, I'm really proud to be there, it's a law institute. The, the conditions there, this is the decisive thing. The colleagues are not necessarily really very good, outstanding. But the conditions are simply excellent. You ask for a book, it's not in the library, it's there on the next, next day, it's on the desk. You don't find this, usually. If you wait a year or something. 
This makes it, of course, possible to be excellent. Conditions, material conditions. There are different ways of accessing it. The one most important, from my experience, the most important way is just make the most out of it what you have. Don't say it's good in terms of candid, not, nothing to be changed, but use the resources you have and use them for what you want to do. Even if you do not want or did not want to study finance, even if you did not want to study here because of the university or because all your, your peers are in another university, that's a good reason. Make the most out of it and you will get something out of it. But only under one condition. And this condition is don't wait that it is brought to you. Just get there and collect it. There are different ways of collecting it. But never trust. If you go to one of these excellent centers or if you go to the lowest university or place which you can imagine that somebody brings it to you, brings success to you. Actually, it may be even that a mediocre university does this because they want you, they want to use you, basically, to lift their own level. So if we look after our students, this is, of course, a benefit for our reputation. I'm not talking about this place here now, but in general. So there is this motivation. If you have everything you want, you, 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 you need, you don't have to strive for more. If you don't have it, you have to strive for more. And this is the, the case for universities and for other places. And if I look around, there are many things to complain. I miss all my English books here, and I miss my German and French and Italian books. But this is not the point. You have a library here, and this library tries to do its best to link to other libraries via, uh, via internet that you get books from there. You have at least this one experience that many people don't have in other universities. You learn, you are forced to learn in a different language. And I can tell you a little story. I met a colleague. She worked for the European Commission. And the European Commission, if you want to work to the, for the European Commission in such a position, it's tough. To apply there, 98% of the people who apply fail. It doesn't mean don't try it for such positions. Try it. But this is tough. So she managed to be invited for an interview. She was Swedish or French. Her husband was French or Swedish. That's why I know it. And in Brussels, during the interview, everything was in English. And people looked at her documents. That's what you usually do. You are invited for an interview, and there are people sitting, and they are looking all right. right. Okay. And then what she said, she studied at the LSE. LSE is one of the London, London School of Economics. It's one of the high-ranking universities. And she said people had been sitting there and looking through the documents and... All right, and you have been at LSE. So the name was important. The name mattered in terms of, all right, this is interesting. If you manage to LSE, you are immediately somewhere up there. So there is a reason to look for rankings and all this stuff. But there is as well a reason to be skeptical about it. 
What she said, this is why I said she was Swedish or French. What she said, what I learned at LSE was one thing. I was forced to speak English. I was living and working in an English-speaking environment. I could have done this wherever in Great Britain. So the one thing is this reputation that is there, Fudan University, Zhejiang University in Hangzhou, wherever, I think these are at least two places, there are many others. The names are important. At the same time, it is important what you make out of it. And I know people in other places uh, in uh, Hangzhou, their English is just horrible. Sorry. And I would say it to them. So you have the advantage. You learn in English. This is something. And this is as well something about learning. Learn how to make use of the resources you have. If you go to a job interview later, bring this into the discussion. I studied in English. There are many people who have difficulties having studied in other countries. There is no one way, but there is this one way at least, try to make the best out of what you have and try to make something out of what you learn, which is important, and which is increasingly important. You know Chinese and English, not only in terms of the language, but you will increasingly learn it in terms of the cultural meaning, of the political meaning, of whatever is involved. Whenever you talk about economics later, This is one of the most important things. Never forget that all what happens in economics is about social and societal contexts. Usually we know, we, we don't really see it. It's part of it, it's not really visible. If you followed what happened last two years, I think. Never trust me when it comes to dates. Um, <clears throat> the crisis in Europe, the financial crisis in Greek, the, the, uh, Greece. Yanis Varoufakis, the then finance minister, went to the meetings in Brussels with all the finance ministers of all the countries Yanis is economist. And he said, listen, I prepared this meeting. These are the calculations. If you go your strategy, uh, shutting down social institutions, asking for uh, repayment of debts, bloody blah, blah. If you go this way, there's no way, the other calculations, there's no way that Greece will recover. And the German finance minister, Mr. Schäuble, said, Janis, we are not interested in it. You can calculate whatever you want. We are not interested in it. This is political culture. And this is political culture as well in terms of things that happened in Greece. And this is what you have to, have, have to know as well, that the calculations, we will come back to it later, are different. What happens with social insurance? What happens with family support? These are economic factors that are usually not necessarily considered uh, upfront. Hello. Ranking, take it seriously, don't overestimate it. Now we come to something that is kind of 
nearing something very practical, very technical. I want you to think, to understand, to learn definitions, whatever you have to learn, but to learn it in a way that you can use it, that you understand what you are doing with it. No internet site tells you this. This is what you have to work out with me, with your classmates, with somebody else. This is something you have to work out, I said this, not within four years, but now I would have to know the statistics, your life expectancy and job expectancy. It's part you will have experience more and more. You will change as well. But there's the other thing. It's summarized in this phrase of, we are all standing on the shoulders of giants. Go to Europe or ask any European here. Ask them China. Ah, it's far away, somewhere. I don't know. I heard it's pretty large, actually. Right? And else? That's Confucius, right? This is a, is a giant. Confucius, everybody knows him. I, I don't know the figures, 70%, if, if you go to Europe, 70%. Confucius, of course I know Confucius. They don't know anything about him. But they know the name, a giant. Mencius. There are certain names, certain academics, certain politicians, they are most outstanding. And even if they are kind of globally known, you'll probably come up without any problem with 10, 20 Asians, I can come up with 10, 20 Europeans. It's still some difference there. But these are kind of unquestioned, more or less unquestioned authorities. They wrote important books. Most of these books have not been read by many people. But they are known. People know that Plato wrote about the state. We don't know what he wrote, but that's a detail. But these are important giants, and we stand on their shoulders. And it is actually not so much what they said, literally, but it is this, the, the way of thinking, the ideas, the complex way of how to approach the world. As I said, I know more of the more Europeans, and especially the ancient Greek folks, have had something very remarkable, which I would like to see more today. Now, today it's very difficult due to the conditions, especially if you start. But I feel still very much in this tradition in some way. They did not teach anything in terms of this is I tell you and this is what you have to know. What they did and you find it actually in the writing of the ancient philosophers they engaged with their pupils with their students. Then it's Frequently, the, the, the term pupils is used. Students. They engage with them. I could play this game. Why are you writing? And then you give an answer. And I may ask, is this really what you think is important if it refers to what I said? So, they have, of course, something in mind they want to teach you. But they want to teach you in a way 
that you say, all oh, right, this is what I did. You are getting aware of what you do. If I tell you, right, you take this note and ta ta ta, you won't remember it. If you are good after 45 minutes, you remember it. After 90 minutes, you won't remember it. If you are normal, after five minutes, you forget it. This is how our brain works. The best way our brain, our brain works is engaging in something, seeing the practical relevance. This is, as I said, something that is difficult in educational settings as we have done them now. But still, even there, we will get deeper and deeper into it. Even there, you have, as well here and today, at least two libraries. There's one there. And there is one there. And I, I think it's here, isn't it? The large library on the square. And I, I heard that the, the city library would be pretty good as well. Go there, look at the books, look at the physical books, just go around. There are two ways of reading, two ways of using literature, be it on the internet, be it in the library. I told you, I think I told you about my reading habits. I, I'm, I'm a very, very slow reader. It takes ages to read a book. It's terrible. And then, under certain conditions, for certain purposes, I go to the library, I have one week, and read about 150 books. Because I know what I'm looking for, I know roughly the authors, and I scan them, checking what do I need now for the purpose I have in mind. Reading 150 books within a week is pretty tough. But you can do it. But you will be very selective. Reading has the other dimension. Read something, think about every single word, think about the meaning, and think about why do I read this? The most exciting reading is actually mostly something you pick up. Well, this is actually always the case. You pick up, you start reading, first page, and you cannot stop. You don't need it. There's no reason that you need it because you have exam tomorrow, you have to know this for, for what it is. You pick it up, you can't stop. For whatever reason, it's, it's written in the way you like, or it is something, a topic, that captures your attention. Try to provoke it as well. Try to go into the library, or try to go onto the internet, and just browse around. Look for something you actually are not looking for. Enjoy this process of exploring something. and use both ways. Of course, I know you have to go at some stage to the exams and do this, but use this broad way of reading as well. I will put this book, I think, tomorrow into the library. I had been told it's not there. I don't know why they told me that I should work with it. It's one of the books I don't really like it. I could say as well, I really don't like it. Small difference. <coughs> yes. 
it tells you exactly what to do. It gives you some tools, and many of the tools are actually very good. You can use them. It tells you how to take notes. It tells you why you should take notes. It tells you many different things. I'll come back to it later. So there is the book. I won't teach it. I won't engage with this. This is your thing. Not least because you have every, everybody has his or her own way of using these things. And you have to find out how you want to use it. My reading style, in terms of making notes, underlining something, highlighting, changed so often. And I don't know really what it is. Sometimes you make notes, you underline something you know, that you will never look at these underlined things. Or if you do it later, you may think, why did I underline this? This is much more important. So don't overestimate it. Look at it, look what is useful, use the tools, but don't overestimate it. Don't spend two months to learn something from such a book and then you save five minutes in doing what you actually wanted to do. There's something else I won't talk about in detail. This is a document, those of you who uh, assessed it, I think it's already there, have seen it, or it's there, uh, it, it will be uploaded at 1800 to date. It's a reference, referencing guide. It's plagiarized. The, the, the colleague who did it said, I don't know from where I took it. I, I just put it from different lectures. I put it together from the internet. It's just a technical guide of how you use certain things, of how you make references. And we'll talk briefly about it now. Referencing is something very technical on one level. And on this one level, on the technical level, I will be very strict. I don't like to be strict, but here I am, because I know the consequences. There are two major things when it comes to referencing and wrong referencing. The one thing is you quote something. Word by word, you take a text from a book. And you don't say that you took it from the book. You just copy, paste, and that's it. If I see this, there are the essays at least, I will try my best to fail you without any consideration. Sorry, this is simply something, we, you will see later why, this is something I cannot accept. You can quote from wherever. From a leaflet, from the shopping center, a note, from your shopping notes, I want to buy this and that. Quote whatever you want, but quote. Make the reference. If it is something you take from another source. This tells you how to do it, the technical things. Book, name of author, book, published, when and where, and, and, and. There are certain ways, different ways of doing it. That is about taking things literally, word by word, sentence by sentence, and it is as well about taking ideas, more or less Taking this idea and putting it into your essay and not saying it is taken from you. This is always a little bit tricky because, of course, kind of everything had been said already somewhere in some form. 
But there is a fine line, and you will mention for yourself, and be honest to yourself, you will mention this is just something I copy from there and I use. It is not based on my thinking. As I said, we will come back to it later. There is another one which is especially for, for us attractive. For us meaning for those who speak different languages. If you copy something from a famous book or not so famous book, what sometimes it's done automatically, you submit your paper, it's going to a computer tool, and the computer tells you plagiarized. Right? Red light blinks up or something, and then we know. So this is very, I, I don't have to know what you quote, the computer knows. At least it tells me something and then I have to check. So this is the one thing. And computers are clever and they can speak m more than one language. But if you translate something from Chinese, translate it into English and don't make the reference, most likely it will not be found out. Not by the computer. It may be found out by me or some colleague who says, I think this was something so-and-so said, and then we can check. Don't try it. You, you can do the calculations. In 90%, 95%, you will be fine. Nobody will know about it. But if you meet me with a one with a five percent, you are in trouble. I just want you to be honest to yourself. As I said, it is something sometimes it's 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 difficult to say. Because of course these reference rules, Chicago style. It had been presented, I don't know how often. You cannot really be innovative in the formulation. It is a basic rule, everybody knows it, and you write it again. I don't really know if you have to reference this. But if it is about really, really relevant ideas, reference them. There are some values that are linked to it. 